Okay, this is episode three. This is to wire up the little guy Max to the inverter that was installed in episode two. Here are the parts. It's uh, pretty simple. The inverter I will be wiring to these existing duplex outlets. Now, with that, I'm going to be doing the top one is shore power. And the bottom one is the inverter. So I have four of these outlets that are in the Little Guy Max. I have a 2020 Little Guy Max. So I have one more than the 2018 and 2019 over in the kitchen area. So you have this one. You have this one over here underneath the bench. And over here, you have that one next to the stove top. And then you have one in the back in the bedroom area. This one was the one that was added in 2020. As I said, 2018 and 2019 does not have that outlet. So back to the parts here. Okay. So you're going to need some cable. This is number 14, two conductor, black and white, and a ground wire. Okay, I'll include a link below for a roll of uh, 50 foot from Amazon. But you can buy whatever you need, the length you need at Home Depot or Lowe's. Just... Uh, measure it up and then you're also going to need a ground wire it's a short piece but that'll be in the description below then back over here we have a ground fault detector to include we have a short cable here that will be connecting to the ground fault and using that to take it uh, outside for an external extension cord i'll be using this little plug here it's a two inch plug be drilling the hole in the floor in the inverter cabinet so that I can uh, use an outside extension. This here is a six foot cable I bought off of Amazon. And over here, instead of using wire nuts, I'm going to be using these Wago connectors. This one's for three conductors. Pretty simple. A lot easier to use than the wire nuts in there more assured that the wires are connected properly it can do solid or stranded wire so we got a three conductor here i bought a box of them because i have other projects i want to do at other places and in the home and over here is a five conductor connector and i bought a box of those so i'll include the link below for the boxes you can buy a smaller amount on amazon you can get ones with two conductor three conductor and five conductor and a little compartment you really don't need a lot for this particular project so here's all the parts and pieces pretty simple okay uh, the first thing i'm going to do is wire up this outlet here next to the dining room seat and this one underneath over here now before you start doing anything, you're going to go over to the power box over here. And the front branch circuit for my little guy mix is this guy right here. And you turn it off. And you see the charger I had there is no longer on. So you need to plug something in. You can see to make sure the circuit is off. Okay, here's the first outlet we're going to work on. It's up here at the front, the left of the front cubby. And as you can see here, I have a 2020, which had the TV that went up and down. Now, 2021 and 22, they deleted the uh, TV part, and they put a storage cabinet down here. But I have some nice access here. I'm not certain... What they did for access so you can run wires through, you might have to drill some access holes so that you can do the same thing if you don't have the TV. So here we have the outlet. The plate, base plate is off. The breaker is off so that these wires aren't hot here. And I'm going to be wiring this outlet. So the top one is your power. And the bottom one is going to be the inverter over here. So I've already taken the cover off, taken the cushions off on my underneath my uh, 
seat area on the right and on the left. I've taken it off over here where the uh, heater, etc. pump is. And right over here is the other outlet that I'm going to be wearing. So I'm going to be wearing this outlet and this one over here. So let me uh, turn off the video and do a little bit more prep. But now what I do want to point out is the way I can wire this separately is if you look at this outlet right here, you see that little tab there? You just break that off on each side with a pair of needle nose. Then that separates the top outlet from the bottom outlet. Okay, here you have the outlet. I've used the needle nose to take this little tab out in the center. You just wiggle it back and put the needle nose on there. Wiggle it back and forth and she'll pop out. This is on this side. And as you can see on the gold screw, we got the black wire that was originally there. And on this side, we have the white wire on the silver on the top one. That's, so that's the original circuit. And again, the little tab is missing off there. Turns out with this white wire, it was over in here. So I had to take it off of here and put it on there. And then I've got the ground wire disconnected from here. So now inside the box, there's like this clamping thing. Holds the wire down. Right here. The original wire. And I'm going to have to put another wire in here from the inverter. So what I'll be using... Is that six foot extension cord right here? So one end will plug into the inverter side, and then I'll end up cutting off this end here and using that with those Waco terminations. Now, this is a be stranded wire, so I end up cutting it out, and I'm going to end up putting a drilling a hole down here in the box separate from these low voltage wires here. We don't like connecting 110 volt wires in the same hole. So I'm going to drill a hole here. And then I'm going to run the other end of this extension cord from this inverter area through the hole. And then into this area behind here. I'm going to take that little clamp off in there. And put the wire through there. And then I'm going to end up connecting it on here. Or the inverter outlet and then the other thing I'll be doing is all the ground wires from both the extension cord and this and then I'll be running a wire from this outlet to over there underneath the bench so I'll use that and put those together so first thing I'm going to probably do is do the ground wire and run the extension cable into there and best to put those in the back of the outlet and then I'll move forward and connect the other side of the outlet with the wires from the Waco connector, which uh, will connect also the extension cord and the cable that I'll be running to the other outlet, outlet box. Okay, now we have the uh, Waco block with all the grounds connected. Put a short piece of wire that green wire around the ground post on the outlet into the Wago block. And then I ran this one here, right here, is the extension cable. And that's the green wire from the extension cable. And I also ran the wire to the other outlet box under the seat and took the ground wire from that. And then the original ground wire from the original wires that were coming into this box. So of the five connections, I used four connections. Now I have a one of the three conductor Wago blocks here. You just flip the switch up, stick your wire in to the end and flip it down. And then on the side of the Wago box right here, they give you the length of how long the wire should be. Now it's not this side. I guess it's this one over here. See those two little arrows there? That's the length of the strip part of the conductor. 
so that it fits in the Wago box and and allows you to flip these little guys down. Pretty simple. It's easy to do. It's not hard to press. And then you can, these things are actually reusable. And they flip back up. So and the next thing we're going to do is we're going to tie the... Right now we have the original wires here on the top outlet from Shore Power. And then the bottom ones. So we're going to put uh, two more Wago connectors there and uh, then we're going to button this box up and then we'll go do the other outlet Alrighty, we already have now we have the outlet all connected we have the top original wires for the shore power the bottom ones uh, the black on the gold and the white on the silver on the other side for the inverter circuit and as you can see, we got the way goes here. We got the extension cord that goes over to the inverter. Plus, this one here goes to the new plug. And then we have this one. And when I say new plug, that's the one under the bench. This is the cable that goes over to the other outlet. And then this one here is a short piece. It goes from the way go block to the outlet. And we have the same thing. On the other side, with the neutrals for the bottom. So, now, we'll put all those connectors inside towards the back. And put the outlet on there. Screw the outlet on, and uh, then we'll put the faceplate on. Okay, we have the outlet in place. Now, I didn't tighten it all the way down. I wanted to show you that this thing fits in there fine. You make sure it's down before you tighten the screws, or they're going to bend it, and face place is not going to go on there very well. But with the Wago connectors, back in the box, I have the ground wire Wago first, with a neutral on top of that, which is the white wires, and then the black one was over here, more towards the side of it, and she fit in there pretty good. Now this box here is over here is not that deep a box however you could get a deeper box it's an old work box that they end up using but it worked fine didn't have a problem with it all so anyways we're gonna screw that down it worked out really nice those wago blocks are fantastic we put your wires into those wago boxes uh or the connector yeah pull on it make sure it's connected well i didn't have any problem with it all they're, they're great so we're going to move to the other duplex outlet do a split wiring on that i'm just going to do the front two front ones i really have no need to do the back ones uh, i can use these two outlets uh, actually this one here is the one i'm going to use a lot so i'm not going to wire up those back ones but you can do the back ones the same way it comes off a separate breaker um It'll turn out that you'll end up using the 5 connector because you're going to have wires coming in and out. You'll see it on the next one. This one here, the next outlet that I wire out goes directly to the breaker. And the ones in the rear, um, the one on the uh, kitchen countertop next to the gas burner, and the one in the bedroom area are wired to another breaker. Now, here's the... Uh duplex outlet underneath the bench over here which has the water pump and the tank bypass and all the good stuff now fortunately they had a nice loop on these wires so I was able to pull this outlet out so I can work it on it now you can see what they've done you've got one of these wires goes to the shore power breaker over in the breaker box and the other wire goes over to the outlet that was over here so they use the screw terminals there we're going to use the wago terminating blocks instead of wire nuts and so you can see what they did also over here on the bare copper wire they twisted them together and they put a little clamp on there and then they buttoned it down on the terminal the green terminal here 
So we're going to use those Wago blocks like we did in the other outlet. So we'll have these two wires. And then also the new cable that I ran in from the other outlet for the inverter circuit. So we're going to top one be short power. The bottom one will be an inverter. Now, if you were to wire up the rear duplex outlets, you could run from this outlet here to the outlet back over in the bedroom area and then from there over to the outlet next to the gas burner. So you can daisy chain the inverter circuit and leave the regular outlet circuit or the shore power circuit with the wires that are already there. Now what will happen is um, the back ones again as I mentioned is coming off of the other breaker in the power box but all you have to do is do the wago box just like we're doing here and uh, you'll have an inverter circuit for all your duplex outlets i just didn't see the need for it right now but in the future if i decide i do i can just daisy chain off the bottom outlet here this is the inverter circuit and go from there so let me pull the other cable in there, disconnect these wires, put the Wago blocks on there, and I'll show you what we have. Okay, here I have the outlet box with the shore power all set to go. All I have to do is connect it up to the duplex outlet. But you can see here, I left the twisted copper clamped and just put it under the connector. Here's the green wire for the ground down the duplex outlet. And on the new cable coming in, we'll also include the ground in there. Now this one here is just gonna go to the duplex outlet. The white conductor will go on the silver and the black will go on the gold one on the top outlet. And then it turns out with the new cable coming in for the inverter power from the other outlet we just did, I'll just be low, landing the, um, the white and the black conductor on the lower outlet. So the ground portion of that conductor will go in this little guy here. Okay, we have the duplex outlet wired in a split configuration it's all ready to stuff back into the outlet we're going to do it the same way we're going to put the ground guys we go connector first then we'll put the neutral white next and then we'll do the black last so again here's the two Original wires, they're now wired to the top plug. And then here is the new cable we brought in. Let's see if we can get a good look at that right there. And those are wired directly to the bottom outlet. And you gotta remember to take that little bar out in between. Just wiggle it back and forth so that you have two separate circuits. So we'll stuff it back in the box there, put the face outlet on it, and should be good for having an inverter circuit to these two different outlets. Alrighty, here's the final piece to the project. Over here you can see that I drilled a hole down there. Uh, let's see if we can get a better shot on that. There it is. And I used a two inch hole drill saw and down there you also see there's a, a plug to stick in the hole to plug the hole up when you're not using the outdoor extension now that outdoor extension plugs into this guy over here which is your ground fault so it's all ground fault protected for the outside and then this right here is the cord that we ran inside to wire to the bottom of the duplex outlet so the bottom is the inverter and you can see the charges working here here's the inverter on off switch you see that's on so here it 
use again. Drill hole for, and that's a three foot outdoor extension. I got it listed down below. And this is your ground fault detector, which is plugged into the inverter over here. Again, this is the cord that wires in the duplex outlets. Now, as far as this guy here, there's a whole bunch of things you can buy. This is a little power strap. Got that at uh, Harbor Freight. Got this little connector here. Splits it into two. Not bad. And then the real cheap way is this little guy here that plugs into the outlet. So there's a whole bunch of different ways to use that one outlet there. Uh, there's a lot of different things out there you can buy. So this is a wrap on this uh, episode. One other thing. By using the ground fault and not having a fancy transfer back and forth between the shore power and the inverter, it's really inexpensive. It's not complicated. It's not sophisticated. It saves you a lot of money. And you don't really have to have that fancy inverter that switches back and forth so if you enjoy our video please give us a thumbs up and please subscribe and you'll get a notification of future episodes have a nice day